hello there. <laughs> no, it's good. I love it. Great. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Tommy just said my line. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's a dream come to bye. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's okay. <laughs> so as you can all see, we have the wonderful Jeffrey Pierce uh, with us again. So I will do like clapping sounds and everything because there's only the two of us. So just there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> Welcome back, Jeffrey. We are so happy to have you. It's oh, like I'm thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to be back. Thanks for having me. Oh, yes. Um, there are many exciting things happening in your life. <laughs> so I think we're just going to jump right into it. And mm -hmm. before we do that, I will say that uh, your prediction uh, about the presidency was correct. Oh, yeah. We, were all <laughs> like, we have to mention oh, that. Like, that was on. on the other side. Oh, yeah. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine the alternative? Oh, uh, no. I, 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 I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't now wanna... I'm going to start sweating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's in saying that it was been that long since we've spoken directly. Yep. But yeah, it is. Uh, it is a different world now than it was before and hopefully Good. trending in the right direction. And, you know, all the poison is continuing to rise to the surface as we see like every day in the news. But mm -hmm. maybe maybe the good people, the good hearted people in the middle who don't really uh, realize what's been going on, mm. start to get uh, aware that they're gonna have to pick a side. Mm. Uh, and then hopefully things can trend in the right direction because it's so easy to pretend like, I don't see it, you know, I don't see racism. Mm. Racism <laughs> is over, it's not, it's not a thing, is it? Not old, and then, just not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, these young, brilliant soccer players, you know, miss mm. some free kicks and they're not free. There's a guy trying to stop them. And, you know, there's no question that those guys are brilliant athletes mm -hmm. and they get a storm yeah. of racism poured on their heads. And you just think, what the fuck is wrong with people? Yeah. So, I, but, I, but it's good because that poison is run underneath as a current for my entire life. Mm. And the pretext that it's not there is uh, keeps it from getting solved. So maybe, you know, the more comes to the surface uh, and people start to feel shamed of feeling that way again, we get a solution that's, that's uh, you know, more permanent and, and binding on us as, as a species. That is One can only yeah. hope. Because yeah. the alternative is fucked. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I the whole the, watching the reaction to the football, especially in England, was a lot of like um because I was I was shooting for like the two weeks as it was kind of building up to the final, um mm. and uh, people wouldn't stop talking about it. And I was like, I don't care. And I've kind of come to the come to the place where I'm like, I have like Im like immeasurable respect for the English team. I don't like the English public. <laughs> <laughs> The pictures yeah. and the videos that came out of like Leicester Square during the, the final were like, oh, my like, God, yeah. it was very yeah. funny. I, I would literally I went to a hotel the night of the final and uh, we were up very early the next morning uh, for the mm. uh, for the work that we were going to be doing. And the lady at the front desk was like, it seems a bit mean for them to be getting you up that early um, on the day of the, the Euro final. And I was like, it's OK, I don't care about football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be ever, watching this ever again. Never again. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it, it is a uh, yeah, but it's important for us to look in the mirror. Mm. And I think you know, if my books are about anything mm -hmm. beyond being like you know pulpy horror entertainment, they're hopefully about looking in the mirror a little bit. Yeah, and looking at history and and sort of like realizing that we are the de descendants of not necessarily good people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yep. think before we get into that though there's been a different piece of very interesting news which kind of <laughs> delayed our, oh. Uh, uh, oh. uh, our, our meeting again today you're in the last of a series on HBO I am I mean and I'm not Tommy it's wonderful um uh yeah I, uh, I, I heard you're gonna be Barry yes <laughs> and I can't divulge too much more than is already sort of out there in the press. Yeah, we've we've, um, we've, we've 
that's a, as much to be done. It's like, oh, so we know this piece, but he's not going to be able to tell us anything about it. But like. yeah, um, but but uh, I yeah, I am I am over the moon. The the cast that they're putting together is so good, mm. and from everything that I've seen and heard, just absolutely lovely human beings. And going to work with them is going to be a pleasure. And being a part of something that I think is. I don't know, I was just thinking about this the other day and I haven't said this to Neil yet, but I want to just take him by the shoulder and say, you made The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two of video games. You made these two perfect gems. Yeah. Uh, and we texted a little bit after the, the uh, Deadline article came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to him, you know, I, I, I'm just sort of like dizzied to look back at the first time I met you when you were just a, this writer behind the table and you were not the director and I came in and auditioned for Joel and what it's become since then, I might've been able to sort of imagine in terms of the scope of what the games became and the impact that they've had uh, on the, the, you know, this current generation, but it would have been laughable to, to say, well, this is where we're going from here. Mm. Um, and to see what it's become and what it is becoming is really extraordinary. I've read a couple of the scripts and they are breathtaking. Um, and every sort of piece of tone and texture of the game exists in the writing. And then it's a hundred times more because you get to do so much more. Uh, you know, it's all the cinematic. It's not, you mm -hmm. know, all gameplay. Um, mm -hmm. But they're, I think, the best scripts I've ever seen in terms of the level of detail, the level of texture, the capturing of the essence of Joel and Ellie and, you know, everybody, all the other characters. It is going to be phenomenal. So just to get the chance to go and work on that is, you know, it's, it's just a rare, rare treat to know yeah. what you're walking into is going to be something that can't help but be uh, excellent is, is a mm. great feeling. Oh. Um, yeah, kind of. So, I've, been, so, yeah. I've, been, I've been sort of like very wary about getting on any kind of hype train for it because it's like it's obviously it's so far off. Can't really get yeah. excited about it now, but I am just oh, yeah. like going, oh yay. <laughs> yep, <excited>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit of excitement in there, like yes, it'd be good. It, it, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was excited about it, but when I read the scripts, I was like, Jesus Christ, Neil, this is just it's perfect. They're just like he and Craig are doing amazing. Uh, work at translating what was effective about the game mm -hmm. into uh, a really cinematic uh, uh, masterpiece. I cannot wait. Oh, I can't wait to watch it. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I was the same as Katie. I was like, I'm excited. And then, you know, but I, I don't want to overhype myself. And then they announced Pedro. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. Shit. I think no. everybody kind of collectively went, no. Pedro Pascal. No, yeah. Don't announce that. And then they announced uh, Gabriel is going to play Tommy. And yeah. then, you know, and then the announcements just kept coming in. And then you messaged me on, I think you messaged me on Thursday if we can record. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think that was when I, I knew that it was yeah. coming out that morning. Yes. And then I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, oh, what, what, what is coming out that we should know about? And then it popped I'll up. I'll be much more night. interesting to talk about in like three days. <laughs> I, I, I nearly fainted. I'm not even lying. I was sitting on my chair and I was like. <gasps> yeah, I had a proper like, because it literally, I think I saw like a reply to a tweet as opposed to like the main sort of article pop up. Yep. So it was just sort of like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay let's go yeah and obviously the first question was but wait he can be tommy now mm -hmm. so what's happening because i think you can reveal this much but perry wasn't in the game so no perry is perry is new it seems perry is brand new and part of a brand new branch that has huge implications for things that did occur in the game but mm -hmm. Uh, uh, is but, completely new. Uh, uh, ooh, and so that's exciting that is because it will unveil things that attach to the game and you'll be like, oh shit, that all sort of like yes. makes even more sense now. So that's, that's, that's uh, awesome. Fun. And it's obviously flattering to be, I do consider myself a character actor. I think at my mm -hmm. best, I'm a character actor. Uh, uh, and so 
to have that uh, acknowledged and recognized by Neil and Craig. And they're like, he can do this. No one's going to mistake him for Tommy. No one's going to be like, oh, that's Tommy. <laughs> what the hell is Except Tommy us. playing Perry? <laughs> But, you know, it's like uh, they know that I'm going to bring things to the table Obviously, that, yeah. that, that that do a great job at separating those, you know, mm -hmm. those any con preconceived notions about uh, uh, what I do in the role. So that's, you know, thrilling. Um, and uh, and now I have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's always and, a fun feeling, though, knowing that it's like, oh, it is. I, I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> well, yeah. and I have some I have some time. Uh, uh, I've got a window before I go up to shoot to sort mm -hmm. of like really focus. And it's rare uh, in my experience to have much lead time. Usually it's like, okay, good. You're booked. You're shooting. You'll be on set on Monday. Yeah. Every, you better be ready. <laughs> um, so to be able to do some extra stuff to prepare is, is, uh, uh, is definitely exciting. Mm. Oh yeah. I, I can imagine like uh, you just uploaded a picture not too long ago where you were running <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's part like, of the preparation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you say, yep, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to run from clickers or toward clickers or from Fedra or toward Fedra. You know, exactly. I, I've got to be ready for anything. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I would like to take this chance to say that <clears throat> I can die excellently. So <laughs> you know, just just saying. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy yeah. to die in the last one. Yeah, have to. I I have no, absolutely no influence on that. You have to the Calgary. I figured, but you know, it didn't. It didn't hurt to say. Maybe <laughs> someone is listening. <laughs> exactly. I yes. can't wink. But I am know. a dire. Yes. <laughs> I've I've <laughs> had some good good deaths too. It's it's a it's a skill, no question. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> But anyway, um, just to uh, go towards the book, we obviously both, well, I listened to it as well, I'm not going to lie, uh, because I found it much easier to do because I was drawing next to it. I was drawing, oh, cool. I was just listening to you. I was like, hmm, great. Uh, nice. And <laughs> I can confirm, like, I saw you in many things, obviously, uh, and uh, we love Tommy, but uh, I... I, I have to agree 100% uh, with you when you said that, you know, you're going to bring something different. Because when you started talking with the first book, I was like, I Who the hell Jeffrey? is that? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I Googled it, I think maybe three times. I was like, is it him? Is it him? <laughs> I was like, it doesn't sound like <laughs> Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it, I was the best actor that I could afford. So I really didn't have much of a budget to sort of sit down and say i'm gonna do you know i, I knew that boy it was it was a leap to sort of uh decide to do it yeah and then it was more work than i have ever mm -hmm. imagined was possible to have to be done i can't like because i ended up recording it <laughs> i recorded it with a friend okay who's who's a he he let me come use his studio uh, the first time and uh, and we made the mistake of forwarding all of the chapters to me as mp3s instead of wave files oh, no. so it's Ooh. a really relatively low quality and then you edit with that now I was dumb enough to do 17 chapters like that and edit them and then I was looking at the requirements for ACX and I was like Oh no! <laughs> and I didn't have the original WAV files, and he had oh. dumped all of them. Oh, no. So I had to re-record the oh, entire no. <laughs> first seventeen chapters and re-edit them. And I mean, God bless audio engineers, because literally you're pulling out pops and clicks and whistles and mouth sounds that are terrible to hear and like you're like if anyone you're just gonna get sick to your stomach if if i don't pull all these sounds out so i had to learn how to be an audio engineer and i had to really learn how to use a new microphone and fix all of the things that obviously great audio engineers have been fixing in my work for decades mm -hmm. and then i could like apologize to them and say i won't do those mouth sounds anymore i'm so sorry that someone had to pull those out um <laughs> But it was a huge process yeah. and it was the most difficult acting job I've ever had as well. 
Um, so how, you know, whatever sort of bar it ends up getting over in terms of, I feel it's a fairly professional grade. I'm it's proud great. of it. I was about to it say, it's like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, the fact that you, I, I had no idea that you would have done like the entire thing yourself. So it's, I'm very impressed. Well, thank you. I, I, it, it makes me so <laughs> pleased to hear that because you just, you like I said, we were talking earlier about when you're writing and you're not working directly with an editor, you are in a vacuum of your own mind yeah. and you're stuck mm -hmm. with your own perception of what you do. And if you start going down a road where you're like, maybe this sucks, it's going to start sucking pretty quickly. Yep. Um, so keeping your head in a good place is really difficult. Did, I, I, you liked that thing that I shared from Giannis, the basketball player, which speaks to, I think, life and art and creating and mm -hmm. pursuing a career, all of it. The idea yeah. that if you're thinking about what you did yesterday, that's your vanity, that's your ego. It has no bearing on what today is. And mm -hmm. if you think that way, the next five days, you're going to be terrible at your job. And if you think about how great what you're about to do is going to be, mm -hmm. that is your uh, pride. Yeah. And that that is your downfall as well. And that the only thing that you can do is do the best that you can right now. And yeah. that is, there's life in a nutshell. <laughs> like, there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a, uh, it was a labor for sure but it was a great exercise and just being like, just do the best you can and then yeah. fix it in post the best you can. And then trust that, you know, if the sound is right, if the levels are correct and you've done your job, that mm -hmm. it's going to be good. And if it's terrible, at least you've learned a lot of lessons along the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that is how it works. Like, you know, I, I always believe that we learn from our mistakes, like, Hmm. At, at least I, I really hope so that we do. I, I don't think we try. learn anything. Success doesn't teach you anything. Mm. Nope. Failure is like, that gives you lessons that stick. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it was great to fail and have not, you know, it's interesting because I try to stay present and try to be, you know, in the moment. To mm -hmm. get through like 17, you know, chapters in a booth and edit them and have made the simple error of overlooking how to save the fucking file <laughs> was a great lesson. And it was painful to go back and have to do them again. Yeah. Because you're in a dark box with a microphone and your voice and words that you've written and you're reading these words. You're like, God, I hope this writing is good too. Cause fuck, this is a lot of time and energy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But uh, you did an excellent job. Yeah. Like I loved it, uh, and it actually, it actually inspired me uh, to draw more. Mm. So it it definitely had me because I I didn't even notice this time because I have this problem that you know my attention is like everywhere, and uh, I start drawing, but then suddenly oh I have to check this, I have to check that, and and whatnot. But as I was listening to the book, I was I just didn't even watch look at the time I was just like drawing and just listening and and suddenly it was 9 p.m and I was like hello very <laughs> what <cool>. happened <laughs> where did the so, sun go where is the sun <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry mm, interesting <laughs> yeah you do have to eat that's important. yeah that's important yes yeah. um, yes <laughs> yeah I was I was listening to it to and from work pretty much uh, every day because I would be getting up to get to work for seven so I'd be leaving the house at like quarter past six and it would be mm, like yeah. the thing I started my day with and I like, listen to it when I'm walking into work and I drive home listening to it and I'm like just trying to get them like all right what's happening next who am I listening to now okay <laughs> yeah it, it is a, a really it, great company because I love listening to audiobooks and I haven't done it as much as I'd like to in a really long time and it, it got me I re-got audible so that I was like right I'm gonna put these on I'm gonna make sure that I need to listen to these in, in time for the interview I want to be a hundred percent up to date this time um it's, yeah it's just it's just great I'm I'm, I'm now is. at the point because I think the second book really does such a great job of expanding mm. all, on, on everybody and I am in awe of your ability to have so many characters with so many yeah. backstories and have them like tangled together like so seamlessly in a way that ne yeah. never feels like 
oh, look, we're just we're trying to put two characters together. It's like, no, 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 these people just have lives that happen to have intertwined. Realising that um, James Cox and Isaiah have, like, that sort of fan, like, um, oh, they're, they're gene this in, in connection. Far from each other. Like, this far yeah. from each other the entire time. It's like, oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> like, and they still... <laughs> and they don't know. They still don't know it. And, and uh, yeah, it is a... Uh, it's... I don't know. I mean, they're, they're like, the... I find that the best moments uh, catch me by surprise too. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, there's that whole uh, long experience for Isaiah over the course of book two, uh, where we're seeing into those worlds and we meet Donnie and then all of a sudden Donnie's there and then holy shit, Donnie's, there's a, this connection and 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 then you know on t and then back to uh, Harlan and and uh, and really being able to uh, having to sit down and say okay is it is it realistic that Isaiah would never have met James and the truth is absolutely yeah. like yeah. in that sort of strata of society you know two towns apart the you know he may you know he's seen the father mm. you know at one point but why would he have ever seen the son who at that point is not going to be the inheritor of any of it until yeah. events change oh, that. man, oh. the description of what happened to Harlan, actually, because I was, like I said, it was in my car while listening to it, and I was like, uh, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so <laughs> thrilled, like, listening to the whole thing, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're not done with Harlan yet. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. That's the that's the only uh that's the only spoiler for book book three that I'll give. Um, yeah, it oh, is. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, you know the 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 sort of yeah the, those sort of, and then I had to when I brought Donnie back in, and James wrecking and Isaiah looked up and saw sees who it is. Mm. Uh, I had to make sense of all that through uh james's logic mm. that he watches isaiah do this thing and then he's like he's got a relationship to some degree with isaiah at that point so mm. the conversation that you know you know he just doesn't have that conversation because maybe isaiah is not ready to hear that and he definitely would not be ready no. to hear that. no nope. um, so many people would have died yeah, <laughs> yeah it is a, it, and and those things happen because i you know, there's nothing that drives me more insane than seeing a piece of work that's well done. And then you think, none of that tracks logically. Why, you know, where does, you know, where does he get the lantern? Why does he have this lantern? Why does he need this lantern? And so that I, as a critic of work in general, try to use that critic on my own work as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. The wonderful thing about doing that work is you get something much more interesting out of the journey by making mm. it make sense. Yeah. Um, and making it, you know, attached to logic. There's that entire bit uh, for Isaiah where he's trying to save himself mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in the generator. And all of those things that he has to help prevent his own murder, they're there by happenstance but they're very specifically chosen to track with these things occurred and they had to occur in this order and in this way. And they're not just like, it doesn't happen to be that there's a, a gas can there. That mm -hmm. gas can ended up there because that was the only place that gas can could yeah. end up. Um, and so I try to sort of like find the real, you know, the grit and the logic uh, uh, as best I can for extreme circumstances without doing the jump to something absolutely stupid that no one would ever do or yeah, that yeah. was, you know, like this deus ex yeah. machina that doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever <laughs> in a yeah. piece that is definitely uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, supernatural and illogical and uh, 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 insane, but the, the, the base of it is locked into certain rules that are unbreakable. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, you know, we talked, uh, once we both finished with Katie, we talked about the book, the second book. Uh, Which we may spoil a little bit, by the way, for people listening. So just, you should go and yeah. listen or read the book because it's very good, obviously. <laughs> 
It is excellent. But like, Lily uh, and I have questions and stuff, so we're going to go into it a little bit. All right, good. Spoilers coming. <laughs> Spoilers coming. Uh, but we both agreed that, uh, uh, and Katie already said it, but I, I just have to say it again, that I think the second book is like, it's it's it just grabbed me so much like it just pulled me in so much i just i just couldn't stop it i was like oh my god this is like so good like i loved the first one i wrote you when i finished it and i was like oh yeah this is like this is for me i feel like this is from me but it's i i i just didn't see how you can top that and then i listened to the second one and i'm like oh my god these are excellent. Like, I need more. <laughs> so when is the third one? Yeah, when, when are we getting the third one? <laughs> the third one will be out uh, at the end. Right. Where were we? We were at. Uh, book you three. were just about to tell us when the next book was coming. <laughs> okay. Um, the next book uh, comes out in May 2022. Ooh. Oh man. It's going to wait so long. Yes. <laughs> not, not as long as you'd think. Uh, no, it's true. It is true. It's true. I, I, I think, well, I'm way ahead of the curve. I'm like 58,000 words in, like, nice. you know, 42,000 to go, like 42 days, and I should have a first draft. And then I've got about a month to play with it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a month to just sort of really just do chapter at a time. And then two months to record and edit. And I'm like, okay, so that's like one, two, three, four, five months. August, September, October, November, December. So like January, it'll be done and yeah. then send it to the editors and send it to Audible. And so May will be here before you know it. And then I'll be away in Calgary for a bit. And then I should wrap that. And then I'll have like two weeks to sort of like try to promote book three. That is some good thunder. It is, isn't it? Is. It's got, I, and I can't <laughs> shut the windows because I will boil. So <laughs> we're just going to have rumbling. Don't do that. No, it's good. Thunder is good for, uh, you know, good tone for, for the Reckoning book too. Oh, there yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm trying to think of what, like, what exactly do I want to pick your brain about? Um, I think my first, thing, yeah. <laughs> my first thing is, um, why are you going to be so mean to Renoir? He's gone through it. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, we <laughs> get a picture. like a day. <laughs> We get a picture of the things that he's done, a pretty good mm. picture of like uh, what that iceberg is. And I love him, but also I, very uh, uh, <laughs> there is a, a darkness underlying the man that that uh, that really we, we sort of peel away. Um, it was and it ended up in places that I didn't intend to go. I mean, there's an entire chapter about the development of the firearm and the rifle. Mm. yeah <laughs> that that comes back in and we sort of like uh, i was able to really like i don't know you find yourself sort of tacking in one direction and you think i just gotta follow my nose on this until we get to the end and i'm either gonna waste a lot of my time telling this part of the story or i'm gonna realize that it does have underpinnings that will echo throughout this book and the next yeah and i found those sort of kernels in that journey and was able to bring it all sort of back together so uh uh finding out who they are is is i have an idea certainly a picture of who i think they are mm. but until the rubber meets the road you're never really certain that that's who they are and i end up finding a lot of finding out a lot of things about them that i didn't necessarily expect mm. um you know being rigid in in terms of preparation i think is a dangerous thing to be because you don't leave yourself open to the, you know, the things you meet along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rupert in book one is one who I met entirely along the way. I hit a roadblock. I was like, I don't know where the fuck to go from here in the book. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like I wrote this, you know, one line description of this short little German sapper, yeah. minor. Uh, and all of a sudden I had it a huge story to tell um yeah it's it's such a, a bizarre process of like uncovering stuff you had no idea was bubbling mm. in your subconscious uh, that you wanted to tell yeah so that, that that means that my question is now irrelevant because you already answered that i think like how much do you plan ahead but i think you're like you know you go with the flow at least that's what i'm gathering here <laughs> It is a combination of a couple of things. Like, I mean, I think the preparation is 
huge and yeah. and, and mm-hmm. sort of like technical understanding mm-hmm. of what is going to make a a, a a dramatic turn a dramatic turn yeah um and uh and so i i try to to, to lean on those things i have a very clear picture of where ultimately where things mm-hmm. end mm-hmm. Uh, i have an idea of how it gets there mm-hmm. um and 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 this you know but sometimes i get to a moment and that I have imagined like from the beginning of the book yeah. and I won't do a spoiler here, but like the thing w- Isaiah's lantern was not supposed to go out. Oh. Like that, that moment was not supposed to go that way. And I got there and I was like, hmm. no, no fucking yeah. way that works. Like mm. there's no way that, that, that the thing he wants to have happen in that moment is going to actually happen. Mm. And then all awesome. of a sudden it opened up an entire new pathway for a character who I need knew needed to have his own sort of like reckoning mm-hmm. uh, to have that moment. Uh, and, and so the, the, what, what you don't know is like, what's there in your subconscious, you know, when you step back and think, Oh my God, that's really cool. Like I hadn't planned for that, but it, the way it worked out is better than I ever could have like cognitively decided this is a to B to C to D to E. Yeah. Um, yeah. But because I had a, a road that I was on mm. and it was a clear path, I was able to make logical choices off that branch that brought me something better than I could have possibly uh, uh, done in an outline form, you know? Mm. One could say it's a very long road in the middle of a desert next to uh, a diner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I've been thinking about that. I'm like, huh, so I guess purgatory is just a diner in the middle of the desert. <laughs> <laughs> it it. It is, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the idea of like a way station exists, Mm. I think, Mm. in most religious practices in terms of like, uh, uh, you know, even if it's the Egyptians, like weighing your heart to see if it's heavier than a feather. And if it's heavier than a feather, then you're damned for eternity. (laughs) And if it's lighter than a feather, then you get to go on to whatever else. So the idea of... uh, being measured for the things that you've done uh, uh, makes sense. And, and what better sort of way station in terms of contemporary, uh, 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 in a contemporary idea of like gods and goddesses and demons and, and you know, uh, devils than to, to have this sort of like uh, uh, really physicalized in, in a modern sense. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, I very much liked that. Um you kind of have this these moments with many characters kind of making their way to this way station throughout the story and then when it gets to Holstead um and uh she's like hey come on in and she, he's like no nah, I'm good yeah and that leads to him getting this like amazing hero moment which is also so mm. sad <laughs> yeah <Just> like... <laughs> you when, did it buddy you know well the, the uh in in a similar terms to Renoir, who's obviously got a, a much longer uh, journey ahead of him, mm. um, that that for for Halstead, over the course of book two, he really has to take a an enforced look back on the things that he sat on the sidelines for mm. that he didn't. You know, we talk about picking a side, like you know, being at a place in history where you have to pick a side. Yeah, and for Halstead, the only side that he chose was his own, uh, you know, his own sort of worth, his own, you know, money, trying to get back his life, trying to get back his money. And in so doing, he refused to take a stand when he could have. And so I think that his moment there at the end is, you know, his unwillingness to be judged. He's already made his own judgment. He, he yeah. is at that point. Uh, uh, past uh, uh, the need for anything supernatural to determine what his course of action is going to be. And, and he does the only thing that he can. Um, it's also interesting to see how he's one of the, because a lot of the characters have um, kind of narrative foils of, of things that they specifically did to other people. Mm. And his it definitely comes out in this way of like, oh, I didn't do anything. That's the, that, like, it is, a, it is, um, it is, being judged for you know complete inaction in the face of something um mm. that was um awful yeah. which is, i think is a, is a nice 
that you kind of have both ends of that kind of like yes there's a reckoning for like actively doing terrible things to other people but there's also a reckoning for not doing anything at all yep it's like mm. you've, you've still got to make a choice and, and make a decision to to act in some well, way the, and the and that to do nothing is a choice as well mm -hmm. yep uh that to 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 tamp down any uh willingness to help when someone's like help me yeah <laughs> to do nothing is as active a choice as throwing yourself in front of the car to to stop mm -hmm. it from hitting the child like you know those are two definite choices yeah um and in terms of looking at the characters i'm interested in the sins of commission as much as i am the sins of omission because the sins of not doing the right thing uh are as destructive if not more so than uh than the active crime yeah i yeah. um i will i will do um a plug in here because I no. think it could be interesting for the both of you to be honest because uh, as I was listening especially to book two um, uh, it kept reminding me of one of my no surprises there favorite Korean movies called Along with the Gods and mm. uh, that movie uh, deals with the question of what is right or what is the right thing to do in a form of that uh, the main character dies and uh, he gets three guardians who will uh, lead him through seven trials uh, that will, you know, um, take a look at how he lived and what kind of life altering decisions he made. And sometimes I, I what I loved about that is that uh, sometimes it, it felt like as they presented it that, yes, it was the worst decision he could make but once you get context it suddenly becomes the right decision and i think mm. it was so interesting uh in your book as well and in in here as well of what is right and and you know what how do we decide what is right i think that's like a it's such a big question <laughs> in the end well and how do you i mean how do you decide on on what action to take, I, mm. you know, um, one of the, you know, obviously classics of storytelling is, the, is Hercules. Yes. Mm. And we've sort of like got a distorted version of he's just this hero who goes off and does great things and he's very brave and mm. saves all the Greeks and then he gets killed by his, his wife, isn't that terrible? And what we don't talk about enough in terms of looking at that myth is he's given a choice. They're like, you can have money, you can have property, you can have women, you can have all of that. You can have a perfect life or you can do these incredibly important deeds and save Greece from mm. these horrors. And then the death will not, your death will be painful and you will have to endure uh, uh, great suffering. Mm. But you will have done great things that expand beyond you that save the people of Greece uh, which do you choose? Yeah. And he chooses the struggle and the action and to do the right thing. Uh, and he dies an incredibly painful death, uh, but he endures it with grace. Mm. And that is sort of, uh, uh, I don't think that there's a better sort of like way to, to, to sort of imagine how do you approach the difficulties of the world. You could sit back and, you know, you know, kick up your feet and be wealthy and never struggle, or you can go out into the world and do your bit and try to do the right thing and try to do well for humanity as a whole. And obviously the yeah. second choice is, is a better choice. So yeah. it's, it's trying to I have this, you know, with this pantheon of characters, I'm able to look at that through a lot of different facets. Mm. Um, yeah. it, it's a, it's an interesting process. Oh, yeah. uh, we're living in a time where in America mm. they're trying to outlaw the ability to talk about racism in our history, yeah. <laughs> which is, which is astonishing, it's hysterically funny. And, and because it, it is past satire, yeah. like you can't look at the history of America without the 400 years of slavery that's attached to it. Like mm -hmm. you don't get any America without that. Um, and, and so, 
you think, shit, is it my job as an artist to try to teach history too? Uh, not just like, you know, how a person feels or like mm. present, you know, this individual struggle, but to try to say, all right, within my art, you have to take a dose of our history yeah. um, and finding that that's the linchpin for everything that I'm, you know, trying to do is, uh, is actually pretty exciting, especially in a time when they're trying to make that illegal. Um, <laughs> breaking the law. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> yeah, shifting. absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh. I will. I'm going to shift gears a little bit oh. uh, and ask, uh, "What are your plans for oh. the dog?" Because I'm worried <laughs> about the dog. Yes, please. <laughs> please tell us. We are worried. <laughs> please don't kill the dog. Look, <laughs> <laughs> we love I you here, like but if you kill the dog, <laughs> we're going to have problems. <laughs> I no, I understand. She is a. She is magnificent and yep. and uh, and she plays she's continues to be pivotal in book three. That's Which, all that I'll tell you. That's that that'll do me for now, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well it's just yeah, there there here's my one spoiler for there's an entire chapter devoted to her <gasps> sort of like canine <laughs> understanding of her history. Uh, mm. uh, that attaches back to, you know, the the you know the I'm fascinated by the idea that, you know, instinct is, I mean, the truth is instinct is just genetic material that's passed on. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have genetic material that is passed on mm. in, in utero, but we don't need it. So we don't use it, but dogs and deer and salmon and geese and every animal on the planet has this acquired wisdom from generation upon generation upon generation of their ancestors yeah so the ability to get into her head and into her ancestors experience and to how that becomes practical and logical in in what happens for her in book three it was an awesome sort of like side journey and then all of a sudden like uh, do I want to talk about that at all? Um, well, the she wolf comes back. She's an important, ah, you know, ooh, part I, of the story as well. Yes, it is, of... I had that thought as I was listening to the second book. I was like, there was a very large uh, and strange sounding sort of creature monster thing at the very beginning of the first book, and she hasn't popped up again yet. Yeah. Well, she she pe she appears in the roadhouse. Yeah. In the background yeah. on occasion. And she shows up, uh, uh, she shows up relatively early in book three. And we've, we've got, there's an entire new gang. Like there's an entirely new, how many new characters do I have? Um, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> God, stop making new people. <laughs> well, you just start to dig and you're like, oh shit, that has to be a part of the story. Um, mm. Will I be spoiling anything by? Mm. Mm. We well, uh, let's see. I, I can tease it without spoiling it. Okay. Um, mm. One of the things we don't think about when we think about the First World War is, I mean, I, I think that collectively we imagine a bunch of white dudes on the front line fighting yes. each other in yeah. the war yeah. because yeah, that's, that's what pop culture yeah. taught us. Because pop culture, you know, unfortunately, is also Very white, absolutely <laughs> racist, and like so, you don't look at the fact that there was. There were Indians, there were uh, mm -hmm. Nepali Gurkhas, there were uh, a huge force of Chinese laborers, there yep. were, uh, you know, uh, Senegals, and, you know, every colony in the entire world was forced to send people into battle, either in combat or in support roles, but regardless, they were in for it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, the, what we will we'll discover him in, I think, chapter two of book three is we meet this uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, volunteer who's serving in the Chinese labor corps. And, uh, uh, and to be able to tell their story uh, and bring that into the mix has been fantastic. And there is a collision coming between the she-wolf and, and, and this, this kid, Shen Su, uh, uh, that, uh, that is pivotal. Wow, that is very Ooh, exciting. It is very yeah. exciting. Like, that is so <laughs> very exciting. I, I can't get over the fact that 
you are just so smart, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Jesus Christ <laughs> Are you, and we finished the very first interview we did with you I was like Katie Jeffrey's really smart I feel like I'm really stupid <laughs> no no I, it's not it's not a, 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 a it's it's an average mind that I have forced to work hard and have had you know almost 50 years to sort of like figure things out I was talking to one of my best friends from high school like two or three days ago and uh, and we were, and it said something about, you know, this is how I've been approaching this. And good Lord, if I had known 20 years ago uh, what I know now, he's like, dude, the list of things that we had, we known them when we were teenagers, we would have done differently is about this fucking law. So yeah. just like <laughs> embrace the fact that you have learned and continue to grow and change and try to improve yourself on the path, mm. because that's all you can do. Yeah. Um, Fine. And it, it speaks to the idea that, look, I, I'm not a huge fan of like innate talent mm -hmm. because I've met so many people on the journey who have innate talent, mm. but didn't know how to work hard. Yeah. And mm -hmm. for a long time into my 20s, I had no idea how to work hard either. So I can sympathize, but I can recognize that hard work makes a decent amount of talent fly yeah. whereas great talent makes a person really fucking lazy and i don't know a lot of people who have great talent but not a profound work ethic mm. who've found long-term success or happiness on their road so i i will take someone with this much talent who pours their heart into making that talent as mm. big as it can be over the most immense like oh look how gifted and wonderful this person is yeah because i mean most of the kids who were like in gifted class with me in ninth grade i mean i failed out of high school and and they did not go on to lead gifted and enriched lives so i think that it can be a hamstring you know to cut to mm -hmm. be told early on oh you have so many wonderful gifts if you only applied yourself it should have really just be fucking apply yourself mm -hmm. get it together work hard and reap some rewards from it um There's also um spe especially in an educational sense um uh, our educational systems have a responsibility for, to go okay how do we help you apply yourself because i yeah. think that's also the thing that that is missing for a lot of people is that there are people who want to apply themselves but have like like ADHD or, or anything like that, yeah. where it's like the way that you're trying to get me to apply myself is not the way that my brain works. So like, you may think I'm not applying myself right now, but I don't know how to apply myself in the way that you're trying to get me to apply myself. So we need yeah. to, like, it's that thing of like, we need to be able to find like a, a balance between those two things of, of meeting students where they're at, mm. Uh, mm. as well as, as um, you know, the students also making the effort to, to apply themselves in their own way. Well, yeah, I think that there's a lot of sort of trying to get kids into different boxes mm. in, and have different formulas to try and solve the problem. When the truth is, the kid with ADHD, who you find their bliss and you sit them down with the thing that brings them joy, like mm. a kid with ADHD, you could say, okay, uh, I want you to be the dungeon master. Yeah. So I need you to apply all of that energy to this story and you're going to shepherd all these people through that journey mm. that because that ADHD is a mind that's going at the speed mm. that that requires. Right. So this guy just exploded. <laughs> I heard it <laughs> really cracked. <it. laughs> um, you know, it's so it's finding like, what is, what gives this kid that sort of sense of I'm here and this is mine and I can thrive within this world. Mm. Yeah. And then applying those, then the kid applies those lessons to the things they're presented outside of that sphere. Mm. Yeah. But until you find the, the, the area where you have a genuine sort of like, this is home, this is a comfortable place where I know how to apply that work and I'll work. You know, like you said, you know, like you'll sit down and draw and then it's 930 at night. Yeah. Like you have found your zone. You know how to work hard within that vein. And that's what kids are not exposed to. Like 
There's not enough energy spent on saying, okay, what is going to satisfy your soul? Mm. Because there, there are things that we'll all do, like sweat blood until it's done uh, as well as it possibly can be. Mm. Uh, and then say, that is your path. Now you can apply those lessons in other places in your life, but this is the model that works for you. I don't know how we fix that. There are many, many kids and there are not enough good teachers. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. It is. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think that, you know, I, I would work hard at being an actor, but I have no idea how to apply that outside of that world. Mm. And only when I realized, oh, okay, I can do these other things well too. I can accomplish these physical tasks with the same amount of acuity and, and energy. Mm. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I'm like a full-fledged human being. I can do many <laughs> things and get them done and complete them on time and well. I did it. And it was it long, after, long after school was, was uh, in, in the <laughs> rearview rear mirror, unfortunately. But, you know, it... it <laughs> I've been able to figure out my path and I, and yeah. I wish that for everybody, I guess. No, oh, yeah. Like, you know, that's, I think it's one of the most important things. Like I, uh, I have many friends there at their thirties, like me or, or even forties and they still don't have any idea of what they want to do or who they want to be, or, you know, I guess it can work to a certain. But I bet they knew when they were five years old, Probably. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like getting back to that. I mean, that is the formative age where you want to be like, mm -hmm. what do you want to be when you grow up? And if they say an astronaut, you're like, okay, these are all the things you have to do to become an astronaut, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. But probably someone said, yeah, probably not going to be an astronaut. <laughs> Here's a, here, work on this math problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of saying, do this math problem. Because as an astronaut, you're going to need to know how to mm, do that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting to see. Um, but back to your book. Uh, <laughs> you got more questions. Yes. I have one sure. very particular one, uh, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, although I, I am fairly certain, but you used the same artist again, didn't you? I just want to yes. I just want to plug the artist again. Yeah. It's uh, uh, his wonderful. name is Jai Mitchell, uh, <laughs> Art Gigantic. Uh, is his his sort of dot mm. com is his website. Um, he's a, a friend from high school. Mm. Uh, he uh, has had an extraordinary life, um, and he is uh, he discovered relatively recently that he was the victim of uh, really extraordinary abuse when he was a little kid. Um, and coming to terms with that brought him to terms with sort of a bipolar uh, 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 designation um, mm. that he had sort of like had to look at and uh, alcohol abuse and mm. sort of like an inability to sort of hold on to life. And it's interesting because like they say that the abuse can occur to a kid and all of the energy used to suppress that means that one part of you exists within a very narrow frame yeah. detached from the abuse while a it, i guess a, a sort of bifurcation occurs mm. and so the another part of you exists in an expanding horror of the event that occurred mm. and that at a certain point the two feel completely separate and that's when people have a psychotic break uh, mm -hmm. or commit suicide because they can no longer uh, reconcile the sane orderly path day-to-day -day life and the insanity and horror of what occurred because they've never come to terms with it. Fortunately, our other, one of our other best friends uh, <laughs> uh, after <laughs> his own uh, wrestling with his own demons yeah. became a clinical social worker. Oh, so he was able to meet Jai at the moment when Jai was trying to decide whether or not to end his life and help him bridge that gap. That's awesome. So Jai, who had never been an artist in his life, <laughs> went into treatment. Mm. And one of the things that they did was, well, one of the things they did that 
to try to get him into uh, normal bearings was they put him on lithium. Uh, and one of the byproducts of lithium was his hand, like shake like this. Oh, wow. So on lithium, he went into art therapy. And so in order to capture what was in his mind to paint, he had to do this stuff really, really fast. Hmm. And that's when he started doing pieces of art. Wow. And I saw a couple of them because I was a little bit engaged in his recovery. Mm. I was like, would you draw one, just do one painting for, you know, I wasn't sure I was going to get the chapter art that I was after, uh, the, the cover that I was after. Mm. Um, because I had had a conversation with the, the editor. And I was like, well, maybe Jai can do the cover. And he sent me back the one that became the Harry fucking Moss piece from the prologue of book one. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Uh -huh. And on the same day I got that, the publishers sent the cover of the guy with the bayonet. And I was like, they nailed it. Wow. And so I said to Jai, I was like, look, I'll send you some money. It won't be a lot of money, but it'll be like some money. And mm -hmm. you're going to keep ownership of the art. But would you consider, you know, crafting pieces for each chapter? Yeah. And he said yes. And just started delivering these amazing pieces and then mm -hmm. book two i think he surpasses it yep. and we're already starting on on book three so i've been very blessed that he shared his talent and hopefully in advance of book three we're going to do a massive art gallery showing nice. of 100 pieces of art wow. and a reading and a sort of you know live reading and then a book signing to sort of launch book three when covid is fucking gone yep. next day. <laughs> it's not right now <laughs> no it's not, not over it's not easy to market a book in the midst of covid nope. you're not like hey let's go hang out in a bookshop and like meet and greet in an enclosed space for yeah long I, hours. I remember like, you mentioned it that you uh, wanted to do it with book one as well but like yeah oh COVID yeah just had yeah. to come right. <laughs> yep welcome welcome to the world of covid <laughs> oh god but yeah he, he he's like freaking amazing like oh, I, will, just... I, I i can only hope that my writing is it, it elevates the writing to have art that good in a book and it also gives me a bar that i have to try to aim for oh yeah as a writer yeah yeah better better be as good as the artwork otherwise what the fuck are we doing it is it is it is great so you know you don't have to worry <laughs> <laughs> we can we can both confirm with Katie that it's freaking great. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I was just, I'm, I've I've just opened the uh, the PDF because I, I realized that because I listened to the whole the second book I didn't actually yeah. take take the chance to to look at the art and it is mm. uh, it is it is gorgeous. I was just looking at the one for chapter five three uh, the clock with the, mm. the, the little the, I was mm. like oh I like that a lot I like yeah that. yeah yeah uh, uh, Renoir's nice. pocket watch yeah. <laughs> I always like the artists who can just, you know, they can just imagine it and just do it. Like, you know, I, I think it's it's the greatest gift because I, I am a portrait artist. So it's, it's my brain, I think, works very differently. I think mm. if I really concentrated on it and just try to do it, I could. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm still a little bit like afraid <laughs> to go that way. <laughs> there is, uh, I mean, there it is... Uh... I've seen a couple of videos of him doing mm. the work and it's, it is, uh, it is so intuitive uh, that there's no time for him to be in thunder. Yeah. Thunder. yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't even actually see out the window very well because I've got this green screen behind me. Every once in a while, I'm like, good Lord. I love <laughs> it's like right above yeah. us. I so love good. Too. Um, but, but there is, there is a, uh, like that is his inside just pouring out. Yeah. There's no filter in between the mm -hmm. artist and the medium and the speed with which he has to work. Uh, and sort of like the detailed stuff, like the, there's the, uh, before Isaiah's chapter, he does this, he did this really cool uh, mm. pen and ink of yep. the switchblades. Yep. Uh, and so, uh, and that takes an incredible amount of energy because he's still trying to control a hand that is shaking so he has yeah. to work with uh, uh i don't know uh, how what sort of art form maybe uh, uh just the idea of uh like zen work where mm. you just like one line and that's the whole creation uh yeah. you just have to go mm. uh 
but yeah, I, I, I feel very fortunate to, to have a friend who has shared that gift and, and uh, just delivering stuff that puts my jaw on the floor every time I open the email. Oh yeah, he, he, he really is great. So we're going to definitely put uh, the, his website and everything here. And obviously buy Jeffrey's book. It's in there. <laughs> you, you're going to own it. Like, come on. <laughs> So we, yeah, they're, they're, we try to do, uh, you know, some good bargains because we're right and look, there is a be straight up with you. There is no money in publishing unless your name is Stephen King. Oh, yes. You're not ever going <laughs> to, you know, it's very difficult to make a dime or break even or the hours. You're never going to be compensated for the hours that it takes to write and create. And that's cool as long as people are reading it. Yeah. So we try to give as many opportunities as possible through Amazon and stuff to be like, OK, let's do it. Let's do a giveaway. Let's do a 99 cent special because the entire purpose is like, let's build an audience and tell mm -hmm. the story and have this conversation out in the world. Um, yeah. But yeah, I pretty much have given up the idea that it's like, this is like a money making effort <laughs> so in that event. So on the 22nd, and you may not post this before the 22nd, probably. No, not. no, it'll be going up tomorrow, tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the 22nd, for 24 hours, uh, I think just about everywhere, but definitely on Amazon, mm. the Kindle versions with Jai's color art will be 99 cents Jesus. Uh, all day. Yeah. So uh, you can get both complete books for $1.98 US, nice. uh, which is which is a pretty good bargain. It is. It <laughs> yeah. is for it's not gonna put my <laughs> not going to put my kid through college, but... <laughs> would definitely like to you know uh get as many people reading it as possible because then yeah. then it helps with the purpose of sitting down and saying okay i'm gonna slog through and get another thousand words out uh mm. of, of book three yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, i'm not well, sure if i checked sorry katie if uh, oh, let's go. you published it to amazon no or? no no uh a black rose writing it's an black, indie oh, publisher yeah. in yep. the states yeah, yeah, yeah um you know they're they're you know they are a uh they're they're lovely and they do a, a good job, but yeah, they're not a publishing house with millions mm. of dollars for marketing or anything like that. They do a good job and they do a good quality. You know, the quality of the books is excellent yeah. and they capture Jai's art in black and white perfectly. And I've been really happy with the way that everything has panned out with them mm. uh, because I've had the freedom to create. I mean, I got some responses from publishers to book one where I was like, mm, okay, uh, these are not notes that I'm interested in. And so, yeah, we're not going to continue this conversation because you yeah. don't get what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, and maybe that's on me to do a little more work on my end, but I I'm not interested in, in uh, uh, I want to write a book that I would want to read. Mm. I don't want to write a book that a billion people necessarily want to read. Yeah. Um, and then the audience will either find it or they won't. And that's, that's the, the sort of like, that's the decision. I mean, the notes that they were giving me were, were all ran contrary to everything I wanted to accomplish with mm. the book. So I was much happier to work with the, the gang at Black Rose because they were like, we get it. We, 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 we see where you're going and we trust you as the artist to, to deliver it. And, you know, that's, those are our notes. And yeah. that was what I wanted to hear. Mm. Completely yeah. understandable. Katie? Yeah, Ah, I'm just trying to think, do I have any uh, other big questions? Um, not at the top of my head is the thing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to think, because there's so much stuff that happens in all of it. I'm like, oh, what? what? Um, do you have any other questions? Because I'm going to sit here and keep looking through these pictures <laughs> until I think of something. <laughs> well, um, to be fair, it's like, you know, it's a dumb question, but who do you rec recommend your books to? other than everyone but you know is there like a specific audience that you like to reach or is it just i, I mean i, I think i want to i want to reach anybody who is who likes horror mm -hmm. who sort of like sees that as sort of like a a type of mythology that it's important to to look at um i, I want to reach the people who read stephen king yes. um uh, uh, because I feel like he had a profound influence on my mm. approach to this type of writing. Um, and, and I think that it's interesting because 
one of the promotions we did last year was uh, through this uh, online book club. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they promoted it as historical fiction, oh. which is interesting <laughs> because if you're not expecting a horror aspect to it yeah all of a sudden you're in a different world yeah and so all of a sudden there's heads in a bag that start chattering at you yeah like what <laughs> um and so that, that was kind of the response from some of them some of them it broke through they're like i don't read these types of books but because it's based in history yeah. i found it extraordinary like things started happening that were amazing and then there then there were a couple of people who were like <laughs> the idea of like clutching your pearls about like curse words is <laughs> hilarious to me and a couple of people like the first prologue has the f word in it and i went because this is the one star and it's i was reading right then it was terrible i was like I'm like oh my god someone who likes horror and like murder and stuff like it was misery it was like the character from misery who's like you dirty bird you use that dirty language <laughs> so so that was some of the reaction and then some of the guys who were like historical fiction were obviously white dudes who mm. are immersed in the idea of, you know, white dude history. Yes. <laughs> who really <laughs> took it personally, uh, the way that I presented the world and the way that I presented these people of different races and, and cultures who were all historically correct in, you know, yeah. in, in the events that they were that I was telling. And, and they were, so they were offended for a different reason. I would like those people to read the books mm -hmm. because they're obviously the ones who really need mm -hmm. to see the world in a different way. Yeah. Um, so if I could reach them, that'd be great. Yeah. But if I can't, they're probably going to get COVID because they don't believe in the vaccine anyway. <laughs> so I can't fucking help them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, shit. So, so the best meme I've seen is, uh, I can't fix stupid. And then the, the, the virus is like, I can fix stupid. So, you know, uh, I, I think that, that, uh, that I would love to get as many people interested in the world and try to see it through this lens that I'm trying to create and make their own determinations from there, do their own reading from there in terms of like, did that really happen? And then... Mm look in a history book and say, holy shit, that really happened. Um, I, I mean, that's, that's the goal. Like try to get people to make that connection and, and uh, 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 see themselves within it and see the history of, if not themselves, of their ancestors as it, you know, is and was and will always be until we come to terms with that history. Yeah. I like that. Okay, I, here's 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 something oh. I'm curious about. Yeah, because uh, I'm just I'm just kind of poking through, and I was like, okay, the course of the books takes place over several people's lives, mm. so it feels like a lot of time is passing within the narrative. But like on like what you would might refer to as the present day for the the book, it's only been about three days, like since, three and a half days, I think, at half... the beginning of book three. Do you have a sense of how long that the sort of the course of this sort of present day stuff is actually going to take place for them? Or um, are you still kind of figuring that out as, as, as you go? <laughs> I, I, have an, I have a picture of how long it takes. Mm. Um, but that's got to, you know, like they, they, the destination that they ultimately will end up at has to make sense in terms of yeah. like the, the time. And that is something that I have to figure out along the way. Uh, and it's funny because I, I have to go back and look at my timeline of like, what day is it as I introduce new characters? Because they, if we meet somebody new, like the, the Chinese fellow that we meet in book three, yeah, like we're going to, we have to see his whole like three and a half days. How's he been surviving through all this madness? <laughs> Plus we have to see, we end up seeing his entire journey from Shandong province to Canada. Ooh to France in his, you know, in this journey that he's on. Nice. So, so yeah, like it's three and a half days, but man, some of these characters were covering years of their lives. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it, it, so it's a, it's a fascinating uh, mind fuck to have to sort of like make sense of it all as a writer, as you go, because you're like, okay, 
what day is it and what happened to this guy on day two yeah uh i was uh i think the other thing that i definitely said to lily very like uh quickly after i finished the book was uh you introduced hitler as like a character within the novel and i said this to lily because you uh, hitler i think at this point in history has especially for someone like me i'm 24 and it's like just something i'm kind of you, you get taught it a lot during school and all that sort of stuff he's He's barely sort of like a person, I think, um, to when, when you get taught about him and everything that he did and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Never thought of him as being like a little bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, he very, <laughs> I mean, like, he did everything that he could. Like, the doctors who diagnosed him with psychological blindness, they were dead by the mid-30s. Like, he tried to erase his own history uh, in every step that he took. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's like, not to, you know, get too, uh, not to make a broader comparison, but our mm. former president, right? Uh, the idea that he was able to erase the fact that he used bone spurs to get like, like bone spurs, like, did you have surgery for those bone spurs? Because bone spurs don't go away so that he could avoid going to Vietnam, you know, wow. like five deferments, deferrals so that he did not have to go fight in Vietnam. It always blew me away that the guys who were like, well, I, you know, I'm a strong, I believe in the army, I believe Vietnam was a great war. Like, well, how do you feel about him not going and fighting? Like, regarding, you know, like if you believed in that war and he didn't go and fight, what does that make him? As opposed mm -hmm. to someone who was like, I conscientiously object to the fighting in Vietnam, so I won't go and fight. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's a cognitive dissonance, but there is a concerted effort by that kind of mind to erase the past and to gaslight people into believing something completely different. And that's what Hitler did to all of, you know, Germany. Uh, he, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with breaking under trauma, which is what he did in, you know, but then to claim, well, it was, it was gas. It was poison with gas. It was blinded by gas. And then I got better. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, but every, so everything you do after that moment of shame is to try to hide that shame. Mm. And I feel like psychologically that's who Hitler became. I mean, he came from an abusive, anti-Semitic father and mother who like beat the shit out of him. Doesn't excuse what he did, nope. but his inability to reconcile with that caused his own psychotic break. Mm. Um, you know, it, it is, uh, so yeah, so... Being able to sort of, I mean, yeah, is that dicey territory to go into? Kind of, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> like, uh, but but uh, I don't think that anybody who reads it will feel like it is a, an, in any way a, it's probably a clearer look at who that type of man, that type of human being is Mm. Than than uh, than you're going to see in fiction elsewhere. So I felt like it's it's important to look at you know the 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 that as part of what we're all responsible for, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I I, I definitely agree. Um, I feel like even within the prose, like um, of it, it, it feels like it's judging him constantly, which I found to be very entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, which I because it's like, oh my god, Hitler's here. Oh, and okay, the book also thinks he's a little bitch. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that the, there, there is not. Uh, I don't leave room for. I, I mean, I, there are certainly moments of humanity to be seen, which I think mm. is important. Uh, but I don't leave room for sympathy for him at all. No, and that's the, the joy of writing from the omniscient place mm. and being able to, when you want to, uh, uh, comment on the characters yeah. <laughs> is, is a joyful, you know, experience. Because you can, you know, uh, you can take, uh, no, that's a spoiler. I don't want to draw. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have taken things certainly in book three that, leap out at me from the news and been able to apply them immediately. And I think that mm -hmm. in a certain, you know, in the first third of book three, there will a lot of, be a lot of people like, where are we going? Holy shit, we're going there. And then we're there. And it, nice. but it plays out really, really uh, uh, in, 
effectively for me. So I can't wait to hear what people say about that. I feel like um, I'm doing that a lot as I'm reading them anyway, where because mm. you you bring in somebody entirely new and you're like, all right, how's this person in, 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 <laughs> fit into the whole structure of the thing? Oh, oh, okay, like that. That's very interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I was writing a lot of book two while the George Floyd stuff was going on. Mm. Yep. And so, you know, th there is a reflection every time we meet a sheriff, every time we meet a deputy, every time we meet a cop uh, uh, or someone, you know, uh, you know, standing, committing sins of omission and commission on someone else's orders. We're yep. meeting the guys who killed George Floyd. We're meeting those guys who chased down Ahmaud Arbery. Mm -hmm. uh, that that those are that that those choices that I made as an artist were directly impacted by events in the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember hearing you know like uh, uh, the Guernica, the Picasso piece. Mm. He read the article about the Germans bombing Guer Spain, Guernica, and he did the piece of art. And mm. so, uh, uh, in you know the, the the idea that you have to take these cues from the world and put them into what you do uh, has remained an important aspect of how I approach what I do as an actor, but certainly now as an author. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're doing a very good job of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear what you think of book three. Oh my God. <laughs> at the, at the more I'm just like, no, I want to, I want to. <laughs> I know, I, I know. Kind of, I, when the nice thing is as well is that I've, I've, I've begun to miss everybody, which is it's something that I really want yeah. when I get into a book and everything. It's like, I, the story is interesting, obviously, but I think the story is only as interesting as how much I care about the characters mm. that are the ones living through it. So it's like, because um, obviously there's so many people in it, there are times where I'm like, okay, but like, hey, where's Durant? I haven't seen him in a while. Is he doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. Like, yeah he's he's got a couple he's got three horsemen that, that seem to be looking after him pretty well actually yeah, <laughs> yeah it is uh it is uh it, i have to take my cues as i structure the 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 piece mm. uh a, as an audience member because i'll go back and i'll look and be like all right this is entertaining this is working this is all working who do i miss as a reader like and mm. then and then i have to bring their story back forward because i'm like i need to know what's happening with francois and and caitlin because if yeah. i don't know that I'm, I'm like and so it's a, it's a nice sort of like i'm able to step back enough and, and be an audience member enough to sort of be uh, uh intuitive about how i bring them back in mm. um and that sort of need to know what they're doing is certainly that was a good one. Jesus Christ. It is like a full like tropical storm outside, right? I might go shut the wind like the big window and just <laughs> give me a minute. Oh my god, that oh was scary. God. <laughs> it's for the book. It's yeah, yeah. Exactly. yes, it is. It's perfect. It matches the backdrop perfectly. Yes. Uh, so I'm not even gonna bother trying to edit it out. It's, it works. <laughs> yeah, no, we need the thunder for sure <laughs> yeah come on uh i apologize in advance because i will have bad jokes <laughs> at the end and i know katie doesn't like them so i'm gonna enjoy oh god <laughs> they, if you got if you pull jokes up it is, i leave for two seconds and she's <laughs> <laughs> We're, yes she's gone for jokes <laughs> Okay. I didn't see any of them. I I was waiting for you, and you know. Yeah, no, I gotta just get on with it then. <laughs> no, it's fine. Once you finish the book talk, because you still have had okay. thoughts, then I will say my joke. It's very hilarious. Well, if, if you've got more thoughts, I I will uh, defer to you. <laughs> um, I think as long as the dog is okay, I'm good. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, yep. Okay. She, yes, she's pivotal. She's important. 100% like you know just make sure the dog is okay <laughs> we're good <laughs> otherwise you I can, know like... I can make no guarantees oh, God no one is safe <laughs> oh god Jeffrey yeah that's my worry <laughs> that's my worry you introduce this beautiful mastiff and she's very smart and yes. she seems to be looking after everybody and I'm like oh no <laughs> uh, yeah but I I promise that I won't ever take anyone lightly and that you know that I'm not I'm not intentionally setting up, you know, things to, to sort of turn in, in any way that's strictly manipulative. I promise that. Okay. I think I can live with that. 
I don't know if I can if the dog dies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hmm. but I can try uh, because I really enjoy them. And I think uh, we both can say easily with Katie to read these books because they are excellent. Like, uh, you know, Thanks. they take you to a whole new world. They really Thank do. you. I like, come on, you can even listen to them. And Jeffrey is great. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's, it's really great uh, narration. Yeah. Thank you. I am honored. 100%. Uh, before I tell my joke. I'm very excited. <laughs> I have to ask because it's a regular <laughs> question here. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> what What did you watch since we last saw you? Did you watch oh, yeah, anything that was interesting? Be my question as well. it's like... Yeah, I know. <laughs> you didn't uh, ask. <laughs> uh, movies? TV shows, movies, movies whatever. TV shows, okay. Whatever. If you um, engaged in any media that you've been enjoying recently. Yes. I uh, uh, watched um, Black Summer. Which is kind of like, yes. uh, it's kind of like a, a Last of Us, a really well done Last of Us ripoff. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> and and I want to say that, you know, I don't, <laughs> I mean that in the nicest way possible because True. those actors who mm. I had never seen most of them before mm. uh, are working at an incredibly high level. Yeah. Uh, and I thought there just was a level of uh, excellence within the frame and the budget that they were working on. Mm. I thought they did a really, really, really good job. Um, yep. so, so Black Summer, it was, you know, it's like, you know, it's like a nice, uh, you know, appetizer for, for The Last of Us uh, next year. Yep. Um, the meal is coming. Um, <laughs> uh, just finished Loki yesterday. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Which, uh, 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 is it John Jonathan Taylor? Uh, Majors. Uh, Majors. Yes, Jonathan Majors. Uh, it was phenomenal. Yes. That guy is so good. Um, just delightful. Just, mm. you know, devoured what they had him doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 what, a, what a sort of like gift to, oh to see uh, yeah. an actor like that rise up and, mm. and, uh, and, and deserve uh, 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 that kind of uh, opportunity. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what else? Started Sweet Tooth, which I loved the pilot. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I haven't not gone any further than they, that yet, but, uh, I thought that was really, uh, mm -hmm. excellently done. Yes. Um, what else? Yeah. That, that's sort of like, uh, that's sort of been the frame recently. Mm. Um, I think that's but yeah, it, it really, really, uh, uh, some, there's great stuff being done. Uh, oh, it, yeah. it's exciting to, to see, uh, to, to see anything that's done really really well whatever the sort of uh, genre or, mm. or or uh scope it is uh, it's, yeah. i think we, we live in a time when there's better storytelling everywhere oh uh, yes uh, than there than there has been um, I agree. we're missing the godfathers mm -hmm. uh you know that's uh uh i would like to see more films like that mm -hmm, but yeah. uh you know it's it's always great to see great work done oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and did you have a chance to go back to the cinema no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm in Georgia. Georgia's vaccination uh, rate is still, I'm vaccinated 100%. Mm, yep. uh, uh, but, and I feel confident uh, in the vaccine, mm. but I don't really want to sit in a theater with, you know, where maybe 50% of the people are unvaccinated, whether okay. I got a mask on or not. Um, yeah. I want to go be comfortable in a the theater. And mm -hmm. until that happens, uh, I, you know, it's really just like, I don't need to even catch a little bit of COVID. I don't mm. need a minor case of COVID. Uh, so yeah, folks yeah. get vaccinated. If you're not okay. vaccinated in the United States, you have no fucking excuse because it's free and it's everywhere. <laughs> the rest of the world, when you can get it, get it. Yeah, 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 100%. I think we lost Katie because it's like <laughs> just that is, uh, completely still. So I guess she, make sure she's okay. I, I, I think. Yeah, I will quickly write her, but uh, it probably is the thunder. All right, so, do you want to do your joke? <laughs> I do. <laughs> but I Go love Katie's it. face when I say my jokes because he, she hates them. Well, you have the frozen image of her. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true. Okay. Which country's capital has the fastest growing population? Which country's capital? Ireland. Every day it's Dublin. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god, that's terrible. I know. <laughs> but that's my daughter's gonna love that. That's like a total great bad dad joke. I'm gonna use that. Go for it. I love this. At joke. lunchtime, <laughs> I'm going to totally. I am stealing that now, and I you will can. get a huge eye roll from my daughter. But it's perfect. It is. It's it. These jokes are the best. I just love them. I'm like, I don't know. I got lost in translation, and I, I am just good at bad dad jokes. Sorry. <laughs> it's just, Perfect. It's just working. Thank for you me. for sharing with me. I'm gonna pass it on right now. Please, please do. Uh, I had another one, but I don't think that one is as funny as this or as bad. <laughs> but I will still say it. Uh, why was King Arthur's army too tired to fight? Why? It had too many sleepless nights. Oh God! Oh God! That's terrible. <laughs> the first one's better, I but know. the first one, the second one, is just absolutely terrible. It is. It truly is. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, I don't know if Kate is able to come back, and I don't know if you have to hurry or. I do have to go. Good. Okay, then uh, I will say in Katie's name as well that thank you for joining us again. Uh, please. Notice us. <laughs> the third book is coming out because we need I it. Will. <laughs> we I will. Need it. Of course. Uh, and honestly, I just can't wait to see you in The Last of Us at this point. Like, I'm <laughs> we'll so excited. We'll probably talk about book three before that happens. But, uh, oh. but yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. They're, yeah, they're yeah. not going to have this thing. I, I think we're at least a year and a half from yeah. Last of Us being posted and, and being on HBO. But yes. But and we, yes. It's going to be. I can't wait thing. either. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, well, it, you have to travel to Canada? Calgary. Calgary. Yeah. There you go. Because I have this page on Twitter, and I don't know how they get the updates, but they have everything up, like where they are shooting, what time they are shooting. And I don't know if that's Somebody legal. on the inside on in IATSE is feeding them information. <laughs> yeah. The, the unions letting it, them know. It, it does feel like it. I don't know if it's legal, though. So uh, it's, it's not illegal unless someone on set who has signed an NDA is giving information. That's true. That's a problem. That, that uh, but yeah, true. no, I, I think there are ways to find all that stuff out. You know, they had to file permits, somebody yeah. in the permit office, you know, it, uh, it, it, it is what it is. True. It but is I don't think anything else will come out. <laughs> Hopefully, because I don't want spoilers I'm not on that. Anything. <laughs> I know. All right, Jeffrey, thank you so much once again. Pleasure to see you both again. Yes, 100%. So make sure Katie's okay. I will. I will. <laughs> I'll check on her and let you know but i'm sure she is fine and uh yeah guys get vaccinated if you can and just take care of yourself there's still the pandemic unfortunately and Absolutely. read jeffrey's book and then we'll all get high fives and sign books yes. at comic cons yes that's the dream it's gonna be great that's very the dream. soon yes very absolutely soon. <laughs> all right take care take care bye bye, bye.